Hello, this is Sancho from the Crane Elibition Show. Our celebrity voices are... are... impersonated... Bang? What's the word? Impersonated. Oh, Im are impersonated unless otherwise stated by Ben, Joe, or Miggy. Live from the tasting room of ESB Brewing in scenic Tampa, Florida, it's the Cranial Emission Show. Interrupting the silence. Drop a little silence with an act of defiance. By the Cranial Alliance. And Charles was the name that was given to me. And when I'm on the mic, it's like destiny. Well, he's a mover and a shaker, not a flapper or a faker. If he was on chips, he'd be punching Dr. Baker. But there's more to the fix in this recipe. Here's a dash of number two of the Cranial Three. First name, Miguel. My last name, Hito. I'm a mixture of the best, like a sushi fill burrito. And if you get to know him, then he's a go on Miggy. Got the bitty bitty beats, my box spots, Miggy. There's still another part in this play on words. His name is Joey T, and he needs to be heard. Joseph T. Needles Incorporated. The mold was broke when I was created. If you need a puddle, he's got plenty to spare. And if he was a trucker, he'd have a monkey named Bear. Well, I'm the last dog, the final bark of the pack. And now I'm going to tell you who we are and where we're at. Cranial Emissions is the name of the show. Friday night, 7 to 9 is the time, don't you know? ESP Brewery will be live on the air. Come have a play with us, we've got plenty to spare. A show for everyone, alive and departed. But enough about us, let's get the show started. Now let's get down and dirty with the triumvirate. Welcome to another edition, folks, of the Cranial Emission Show. Every Friday night, 7 to 9 p.m., Ben Charles, the C-squared, Caleb Crispy, and the Reverend Joey T. But we're not live from ESB Brewing. We're, <laughs> we're not 7 to 10 either. 7 to 9. <laughs> 7 to 9. Yeah. We're uh, 7 to 18. Yeah. Live from Garage Studios here. This has kind of become a new thing for us where we go on the road every other week two weeks a month at the lion's den and then we have two weeks where we lay low and do the show from a studio it's a little bit more subdued more relaxing we were kind of wearing down from being on the road for over a year and a half so <laughs> so it's nice if you want to be a part of the show you want to call in a lot to get into tonight you can do so by dialing 813-438-6068 go to cranialemissions.com check out our website there and there's an interactive map where if you listen through the website, it will note where you're listening to from around the world. It's cool for us to be able to track that. Uh, we've got a, a special guest hanging out here in the studio. Haven't heard from him in a long time. Lou Bob Jenkins, who has been a contributor, has been a mooch, has been a pest. <laughs> Many different roles over the years with the show. The last time we talked to him, he... Reportedly, had won a bunch of money in Monte Carlo. Reportedly, had a convicted felon after him for apparently a, a dalliance with this man's wife. A liaison? A liaison, if you will. Okay. And But he's now back. He's found his way back here to the States. He's found his way here to Garage Studios. And with that introduction, Lou Bob, I don't know if I should say welcome back or not. I will, I'll will. i say it. Welcome back, Lou Bob. I'm not going to welcome him back because now he knows where I live. You damn right I know where you live, Caleb. Oh, hey, hey, by the way, by the way, thanks for having me here. Yeah, did yeah you, you're welcome. You didn't bring your rucksack, did you? No, man, I didn't bring no rucksack. I bought some nice luggage while I won all that money. So yeah. how, how much exactly did you win? What kind of money are we talking about, Lou Bob? Well, I don't have it anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, how much did you win? I, I prefer not to talk about that, Joe. I, I want to be in a good mood. I'm kind of happy to be back now. By, by the way, Caleb, Caleb. Hey, you got a nice backyard, man. I need a place to stay. Uh, no, my dog stays there. You can hear him. He's he's actually not happy you're here. He's yeah. trying to get you out. Yeah, what? Yeah, it looks like uh, he's not reacting too well to Lou Bob. But <laughs> yeah, it's good to have you back, buddy. We'll talk to you from time to time as we uh, go through the show. I I guess. Now, I wonder how much money you won. He doesn't seem like he wants IRS to IRS might want to know too. I mean, I guess if it was over there, it doesn't <laughs> matter. Well, right? if you didn't bring it back, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's a good Where point. the hell did he? He's raiding your fridge. Uh, yeah. I think he's doing laundry. He's in your no, fridge. No, he's raiding your fridge right oh, now. Oh, is he? There's yeah. nothing in there. He did it. No, he did have a load going in the in the washing machine. I no, mean. yeah, I'm, yeah, not I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we're gonna start the show off the way we do every single week, guys, and that is with the beer call. Beer call. Serious? Now. Now. Hey, sorry, you son of a bitch. Oh. It's magical. It's 
laughing at me. I wish I could brush my teeth with it. Oh. I want to put my dick in it. I wanted to put its dick in me. Oh. I wish it were winter. We could make it into ice blocks and skate on it. Mm. And then melt it in the springtime and drink it. Today's beer call brought to you by the fine purveyors of Three Daughters Brewing, who yeah. we've had the pleasure of being on the show. They've joined us in the past. Excellent beers. Every time I try one of them, I'm impressed. And the one we're going with tonight, guys, is called the, what is it called again? It is, excuse me, the Bimini Twist IPA. Okay. Bimini Twist. Very good beer. The um, ABV on this is about six, six and a half percent. Very tasty. That's very, good. Very tasty IPA. You know, it's funny. That's where I, I, I lost my virginity, too. Was in uh, Bimini? Well, no, in uh, the twi- the game Twister. Or with three daughters. No, there's a... No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish. That would have been cooler. But uh, <laughs> no, Twister. There's a there's a version of Twister called the Bim- Bimini Twist. That's where they get it from, and that's how it actually happened. It's Naked Twister is what it is. So you lost your virginity, but it all started with Twister? Yeah. That's how, yeah. Naked Twister. Bimini Twist. Yeah. If you will. Wow. I, mean, I just thought I'd share. How old were you? Um, 32. <laughs> I was saving myself. Then. So this was like <laughs> this was like forty years ago. <laughs> oh yeah, about that. No, <laughs> we, we were actually talking about that on the way over here. Like, like you're you you're like you're spring chicken now any morning, my friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm a little sensitive. What we what we decide on the way over here that uh, it's better to look young and be old than be old and look old. Something like or that. Or be young and look old. Yeah, yeah. I would rather be older and look young than be young and look older. Yeah, right. Because it's all really about being able to bang girls still in their twenties. That's really <laughs> all that matters. Couldn't agree with you more. Let's cheers to that. Cheers to cheers. girls in their 20s. To the beer club. No, banging girls in your 20s. Cheers. Okay. okay. And and shoot to uh, the Bimini Twist. There you go. Especially when it works out the way it did for you. It was excellent. <laughs> it was like left foot yellow, and all of a sudden, I wasn't a virgin anymore. It was amazing. Another beer I'm going with tonight, <laughs> I've got the Dogfish Head Namaste. This is a 4.8% ABV. This is a, 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 a citrus beer. This is a wheat beer. It's a white Four point wheat what? Four point eight. Okay. But it's, it's a white beer that's with orange slices, lemongrass, coriander, and peppercorns. Actually, a fairly tasty beer. It's a good summer beer, I would say. A white beer is that, is that a racist thing, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you ask me every time there's something? You're that's the one who always says racist. I'm white, we'll, dude. We'll, I mean, we actually have a story. We'll talk about race later. Okay, all right. We'll, we'll get. I'll let that. it go. I'm just a little concerned. We'll, we'll let him right. be racist later, I guess. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I'm overjoyed because last week we had two different beer stories that actually were very encouraging. We learned that, first of all, that drinking large amounts of beer prolonged your life, extended your lifespan. They didn't say large. You just added large. No, they did (laughs) say if you binge drank. One of them did say uh, heavy drinkers. Yes. We're better off. Oh, they did. Yes, people yes, that they did. They, but they yeah. said the best were people that were the moderate, moderate drinkers. drinkers. Right. You clearly weren't drinking IPA because the second article talked about that if you drank a lot of IPA, hoppy beers, okay. would actually uh, reduce dementia. Thought it'd make you better at basketball. But really, hoppy dementia? Beers. Yeah, <laughs> got some hops. <laughs> Shaving this up. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, that Obviously, bad. it doesn't make you oh, funny. No, <laughs> no it, it, it doesn't. But I, that's, you know, maybe it does. I don't drink a lot of hoppy beer, so it maybe it does. I should start. You are. Yeah. Uh, I am right. now, but I mean, on a general basis, I don't drink a ton of it. But the new article out now, this one, this one, when I, when I found this article, I, I knew you would love it. Ben, th- this course. is a very, of course, this is a very it. uplifting article. <laughs> it is a uh, five scientific ways that drinking beer makes men better in bed. Oh, so you know, obviously, you know, wow. I think there's really six because the sixth one is, you know, if the girl's drinking the beer, then of course you look like a rock star. But this one is actually uh, okay. uh, number one. It makes you last longer. Yeah, that's yes. well known. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it gets you in the mood, especially dark beer. That's why I keep a six bed on my nightstand. <laughs> six pack on my nightstand. Absolutely. You, 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 <laughs> you keep a six pack for seven? Yeah, something like yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, that was good. I see what you did there. That was good. For those that are just tuning in, <laughs> seven was Joe's last victim. <laughs> I mean, uh, last uh, harmonic par- partner. Yeah. Partner, that's even worse. <laughs> Go back to victim, please. Jeez. Sounds so. like seven was a dude. I don't like the way that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what'd you do? Oh, uh, you breaking stuff over there? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're a little cramped in here. Uh, number two is the uh, dark beer gets you in the mood. Uh, apparently, it has more iron in it, and the iron increases uh, lead in your uh, the red blood cells and circulation. Yeah, yeah. it gets you in the mood. Yeah. It's heart healthy and improves endurance. 
There you go. So there you go. Drinking more beer actually keeps you in shape. Like, wh- like the article we found last Which week. Which you last need week. because you're going to be going longer. So you need exactly. more endurance. Exactly. Absolutely. I told you guys I was a stallion. <laughs> <laughs> now maybe you'll believe me. No. A stallion? A stallion. You got one of those one of those Italian horns around your neck? I used there? to. And I actually, hey, Rocco! You know, it's funny that you bring that up because Jesus and Tom Grom and I have all decided to bring those back. No, the three of us God, being Italian, please, we all no. want to get Italian horn necklaces. No, are you going to start putting a comb in your back pocket too, dude? Yeah. Bring that back? Absolutely. That's not a good look. <laughs> half shirts? Are you bringing half shirts back? Only the mesh ones. Did you ever, did you ever <laughs> and, know? Andy beat him to it. That every. <laughs> <laughs> oh, every dude. Every dude in the <laughs> early, <doesn't> listen. <laughs> early to mid seventies was looking like a gay dude. I mean, I saw pictures oh, yeah. of my of my nephews and me when we were young, and they were actually like fourteen and fifteen. They got like these half shirts on with like really high cut like cut off jeans. And often they were mesh. Yeah, they did wear the mesh yeah. once oh, yeah. But what what was the thought process behind that? Was that just to get around the like no shirt, no business type thing? You can't come into this place without a shirt on. So they were like, all right. I'm gonna cut it in half, make it out of mesh. You're still gonna see my nipples, and I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna feel like I'm wearing a shirt, so I'm winning in this thing. It sounds like something like Matthew McConaughey would do. Yeah, it does. <laughs> All right, so how many other ones do we have? We have, we have this, this, is, this that was three. This is number four okay. is that uh, Guinness uh, specifically has antioxidants in it that can help clean up your circulation. Okay. Um, and then number five is that it boosts your sex drive, which I don't think any one of us knew about that. No. Because you know when I drink, I definitely don't want to have more sex. Yeah, that's the first thing that happens. Oh, <laughs> oh, you're being sarcastic. All right, because, yeah, usually that's the only time I want to have sex. <laughs> I find that being alive makes me horny. <laughs> and you also did mention that you said it made it made guys look better to the girls, but more importantly, it makes girls look better to us. That's true. We overlook a lot of flaws when we're hammered. Yeah. We look, we overlook a lot of flaws when we're horny. <laughs> yeah, I don't, even think, if we're I don't think it's the hammer which part. I, <laughs> no, I which I think we just established happens more when you're hammered. We overlook even more right? flaws when we're in love. <laughs> yeah. Let's God. face it. I don't, know, I don't <laughs> know what that is. Go ahead, keep going. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what was the last you, one? Some people even overlook kids. I know. Oh, <laughs> like four of them? <laughs> or more. <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was the last one. But it leads into another story we talked about last week. Um, the craft beer... You know, the bubble, is it going to burst? Where is it going? Uh, there's actually some uh, some craft beer brewers out there that are getting worried about the future uh, because there are so many. And then also with all of the mergers happening, oh, yeah, they uh, are. we talked about last week, um, they're just not going to be able to succeed with these big breweries, or these big uh, distributors, really. They're not breweries. They're buying up all these other ones, and, and they're, they're pushing them heavy. So some of these, uh, this is one uh, from Brooklyn Brewing. And then they also talked about uh, Sierra Nevada and uh, um, Boston Brewing Company. Yeah. You know, they're one of they're the few large craft breweries. Uh, ugh, I can't talk to the craft breweries that are still independently owned. They're not owned by the, the big ones. Well, and to their point, I understand why they're worried. Because, yeah, you mentioned those three. Those three are big enough guys to have the big marketing push from a national perspective. But the other craft brews that now are able to have that marketing push are the ones that you mentioned that are bought up by – the InBevs, by the Coors, Miller. Yep. And so, yeah, all of a sudden now the other craft brews get kind of lost in the mix when you're seeing this big marketing push from these other craft brews that many are unaware are now owned by an InBev oh, yeah. or a larger company. That's like where they it. get the money to do all this marketing pitch and all the uh, the higher and more but broad. Let me distri- ask you, should distri- that matter? I don't think it should matter. I don't think, like, if I like a beer that tastes – because we drink what we like the taste of, right? I mean yeah. – I'm sure if a bunch of craft soda companies came out, and not that I drink a ton of soda, but I'm still probably going to buy a Coke. That's what I know is what I like, or a Pepsi or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. So if a big company buys up a, a, a small uh, brewery and, and you like the beer, I mean, is it just not hip? Is that where we're well, going? Is it one of, the, pro- be, one of the problems you get with that is... Consistency? Co- yeah, consistency. It was just like uh, everybody loves In-N-Out Burger out, out west, right. and mm-hmm. they don't... They don't distribute over here. Yeah. They don't. They don't open franchises, and it, it has to do with keeping quality. It's hard to keep right. quality the further away you get from where it's at, especially beer. That stop breaking my stuff. It's not breaking. I just, <laughs> just kind of elbowing it a little bit. Just keeping it in check. Over okay, right. cool. Yeah. Um, you know, the farther away you get, the longer it has to ship. So some of the like I know Cigar City has problems that some of the stuff if it doesn't sell out when it gets there. It's if it sits on the shelf for too long, it's bad. There's a lot of craft brews that won't ship outside of their state. Well, no, there's state. a limitation. Yeah. I remember actually talking to somebody about Cigar City, and they said the farthest they could go with Florida without opening another another brewery in another state was like South Carolina. That was as far as they could actually get 
and keep it profitable with you know transportation costs. Yeah. Keep the beer. They still fresh, do like distribute higher, but again, it has to pretty much be sold out by the time it gets there. If it sits on the shelf for, right. for very long at all, it's it's already bad because it sits 